welcome to Mountain Road Life. I'm Kristen and today I'm gonna to be trying something totally new I've never done before. I'm gonna be making kombucha. So here is some store-bought kombucha. This is the GTS uh, original flavor that is really popular in our house. And if you haven't had kombucha before, it is a very fizzy drink. It has a very small amount of alcohol in it, uh, very minor. And uh, it's basically just a fermented tea. And it's very healthy because it's full of probiotics, which are very helpful, or very healthy for your gut. All right, so um, I've been watching a couple of videos online and looking up recipes and just trying to get a feel for like what exactly is the process for making kombucha. And I ended up ordering uh, a couple of ingredients through a website call, called Kombucha Camp and it's also available on Amazon. And so it came with the kombucha culture um, and also one cup of starter liquid. So these are two things that you're not gonna find at the average grocery store. <laughs> uh, you're gonna need, this is 3 fourths cup of sugar and apparently it has to be uh, white cane sugar. So this is the one that I'm using. And then you also need uh, caffeinated tea and usually it's a mixture of black tea and green tea. So we've got just the classic green um, choice organic tea, and then I've got the, I'm just using Irish breakfast black tea because that's what I had on hand. I've got my half gallon mason jar that I've sterilized. Um, a lot of recipes actually recommend using a gallon container and also making sure that it's a glass container rather than anything else because you don't want anything leaching into your kombucha. And then we've got a cloth that's going to go on top <laughs> at the end and then just the um, band that's gonna go on top of that to keep the cloth in place. So the first step is to boil four cups of water or one quart of water, which I've just done. And then it, I allowed it to cool off a couple of minutes. So now I am going to brew the tea. All right, so I'm just gonna add these tea bags to the pot. All right, so again, this is the black tea. This is just Irish breakfast. And then we've got this choice organic green tea. Depends on the recipe that you are following uh, in terms of how many tea bags you're going to use. This one says between four to six tea bags. So I'm just gonna go for four since I'm using a smaller container than it recommends. All right, so now that's gonna steep about uh, seven to 15 minutes. <laughs> so I'll let it steep a, a little bit. All right, so the tea has now been steeping for about 15 minutes. And now I'm going to uh, take out the tea bags and then add in three fourths cup of sugar. So there's three fourths cup of sugar, and then you just wanna stir the sugar until it dissolves. Okay, so the sugar is dissolved, and I'm gonna um, pour the liquid mixture, the tea, into the brewing container. Okay, so the next step is to add, the recipe says two to three quarts of purified water. I'm just gonna add one quart because I have a smaller container. All right, so I didn't end up adding the full quart because I just was gonna run out of space because I needed to save space for the SCOBY and the starter. Um, I took the temperature and it is less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so um, you want it to be somewhere between about like 90 to 100 Fahrenheit or 40 Celsius before you add in the starter and the culture. Oh, smells good, smells very yeasty. All right, so I'm just gonna pour in the cup of starter. And then here is the SCOBY. It's pretty funky looking. <laughs> I'm just gonna add it right in. Got just enough room for everything. All right, so all that's left to do is just cover it and then set it aside in a room that is a bit quieter, a bit more calm. So um, the kitchen, there might just be a little bit too much activity as well as other foods that could potentially contaminate the tea that's brewing. Um, also, in terms of cloth, uh, a lot of the recipes uh, do not recommend using cheesecloth or if you are going to use cheesecloth, to use multiple layers because you don't want any bugs to be getting into your tea. Yeah, so we're going to cover this up and then put it off into a corner <laughs> of the house where it won't be disturbed. 
and um, yeah, let it brew. It's gonna brew for a couple of days. So um, the directions say to place it in a warm, ventilated area outside of direct sunlight for seven to 21 days. And then just a matter of like tasting it after about seven days and maybe every day after that until you really like the flavor. So, all right, <laughs> well, this is something brand new for me. I haven't done this before and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens and how it tastes in the coming days. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so it has been a full seven days of brewing for this kombucha. And it's been uh, just hanging out in the closet behind me with the doors kind of slightly open, out of direct sunlight, um, just in kind of a peaceful, calm environment. And so today we're just gonna give it a taste and see if it's ready or if it needs to keep brewing. All right. There it is. Smells very good. It's really good. Um, it's very sweet and actually tastes a little bit like apple cider vinegar. What the directions say is to wait for that good balance between sweet and sour flavor. So right now it's a little more on the sweet side, so I think I'm going to give it a little more time. It's not really fizzy yet. So let's see also if it can get a little bubbly. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, first seven days, looks like things have been going well and uh, give it a few more days and we'll see what happens. All right, it has now been three weeks or 21 days since I began the initial kombucha brew. <laughs> and not a whole lot has changed in terms of what's been happening with the kombucha um, over the last three weeks. I probably, after about a week, it was Probably could have been um, drinkable. It was a little on the sweet side. Now uh, it's still sweet. Uh, it's, it still tastes kind of like apple cider vinegar. So what we're gonna do now is bottle the kombucha and add a little bit of flavor. So I have kiwi here, and um, I'm gonna be reusing these bottles from GT's. It um, lists kiwi in the ingredients, so that's what I'm going to experiment with. So now when you add the flavor um, to the kombucha. Uh, any kind of like fruit or um, herbs or ginger, lemon, things like that, uh, it's going to usually create kind of a, a more of a carbonation to the tea. But also just want to talk a little bit about the learning curve, because again, this is my first time making kombucha. And for the most part, it seems really, really simple. And I think the one mistake that I made was just using a half gallon jar for the brewing uh, vessel. Um, so now I've got this big old, um, this is a one gallon glass bowl. So I have another batch now brewing. I've got the tea uh, right now brewing, or the tea bags, and I'm gonna take those out and then um, be able to make the second batch. So yeah, overall it's, it's a really pretty simple process and especially if you buy the Kombucha Camp uh, Culture and SCOBY um, comes with these really handy instructions and it even, you know, it has everything that we've done up until this point, and even on the back page, it talks about the flavoring too. And then again, so I'm going to be reusing these um, GT's bottles as a way to be more economical and more resourceful. All right, so I've got a funnel here and got the bottle. So I'm going to just add in some kiwi. All right, so I have just a little bit of kiwi at the bottom of each of these jars, and then I'm going to use a funnel to just pour the tea in. Okay, so it's actually been enough time now that I'm gonna take out these tea bags before I do the funneling. And then, so one cup of sugar. Okay, it's gonna take a few minutes to dissolve. All right, so I'm gonna put the scoby in this bowl first. And from what I've seen in other videos and what I've read about is that there should have been actually like a baby SCOBY forming, which I had a little something at the top, but otherwise didn't really get that baby. So I'm gonna need between one to two cups of the tea that I can use in the new tea. Okay. So while the sugar is dissolving, it's just a little too warm to put the SCOBY and the culture in there just yet. Once that's all dissolved, then I'll add this plain water, uh, which should bring down the temperature, and then I can add all of that. In the meantime, we're gonna do the bottling now. Okay, and so also what I've read is to fill the bottles 
basically to the top and the biggest danger is that the bottles could explode because there's so much carbonation um, so that's something to watch out for and I've heard the tip from kombucha camp to put the store the bottles in a either a cardboard box or a, a cooler or something that just can kind of like contain the explosion should that occur. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, so now I'm just pouring the tea that's been brewing for the last three weeks into the bottle. So now it's gonna have to ferment again, a second fermentation for between one to two days. So with kombucha, there's all kinds of things that you can experiment with in terms of like the type of tea bags that you use at the beginning and um, also the actual flavors that you add. All right, there's our first bottle. <laughs> all right, bottle number two. All right, <laughs> so now I'm gonna add the water let the tea cool down a little bit. This step, it says between, let's see, two to three quarts. So this is two quarts. I don't know if I'll use the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna use a thermometer to take the temperature. It's about 30 degrees Celsius or 80, 88 or so Fahrenheit. We can add the SCOBY and the culture. Now it's gonna float right to the top. I think it's gonna be a little more at home in this bigger bowl than it was in the, um, in the half gallon jar. All right, <laughs> so we got our two bottles uh, from the previous batch. We'll check back with those in about one to two days, see how those are tasting. And then we've got the new batch that's brewing. So yeah, so far making kombucha seems pretty easy. <laughs> No problems aside from just the size of the vessel. Okay, well, we'll check back ne uh, tomorrow or the next day and see how these are doing and see how this is coming along. <laughs> All right, so it has been 48 hours since I bottled the kombucha, and so now we're just going to try it. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's sweet. Yep. It's very sweet. Sweet and um, not as carbonated as the store bought stuff, but mm -hmm. still good. Like it. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, first time making kombucha is a pretty good success, I'd say. Not bad. Not yeah. bad at all. Good job. <laughs> So there you have it, and uh, be sure to check out the blog, the link is in the description below, and I'll have more info there, including some of the videos that I looked at as tutorials to help me get started on this process, as well as the links to where to buy the kombucha starter and the SCOBY. And yeah, otherwise, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>
it to be ready so soon, um, but I do have some frozen blueberries that I will add to the bottles and then I will include a little write up in the blog post about how that turned out. All right. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Promise this is the last thing. So the a lot of uh, directions will call for like a large rubber band to go around the bowl and I did not have one. So I just made my own with um, like smaller rubber bands that I uh, tied together. And so just to show you the process, uh, taking the one rubber band and the other and then putting it over top and then going like that to create a tie between the rubber bands and then at the end I would, you know I put I think about 10 rubber bands together and then I would just tie it and tie it with a knot just to create um, the closure so if you're looking to make a larger rubber band <laughs> that's what I ended up doing and it worked brilliantly so again about like nine to ten smaller rubber bands that it took depending on the size of the rubber band. Okay, <laughs> that's it for now. Be sure to check back for more recipes and more topics on non-toxic lifestyle and cooking and gardening, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>